stretch of that game at UConn? What was something that kind of stood out to you? Well, you know, I think number one is that was our first road game of the year. And uh, you really don't know as a coach and, and as a team how that's going to go, especially when that first road game is, you know, it's about as far away from Tucson as we can make it and uh, playing in front of a, a very, very hostile, eager crowd, you know, against a, a very good team and a tremendous program in UConn. So it had all the makings of, um, you know, a tough game for us, especially considering the time of the game. It's really mid-morning for our guys, but we prepared. Uh, we had a real focus about us leading up to the game, and, you know, I, I think if you're going to go uh, and uh, take on that type of challenge, you ha really have to have the wherewithal uh, from everybody who makes the trip that you're going there to be at your best and you're going to compete to win. And uh, I really, really just I like the way that, uh, that it felt. Even if we would have lost the game, uh, our intent was really good, our preparation was very good, and we had a lot of great moments in the game that I think gives us a lot of optimism that we can play some very good basketball this year. You know, the other part, you know, to answer your question about the final stretch, you go on the road and you make free throws when they count, um, you know, different types of, of players. You know, Brandon Williams, who's, you know, that was the first road game of his college career, and for him to make both of those free throws under those circumstances it says a lot about his growth and his poise. Uh, Brandon Randolph, just I think nine for nine from the line. Uh, Ryan Luther, two different times going there at the end of the game. So, you know, free throws uh, were, was a big factor in us winning it, but especially in the last couple of minutes, uh, putting the game away or giving ourselves the lead, uh, it, it didn't have to go that way if any of those free throws don't go down. So, you know, the poise, the belief, the confidence in those guys to be able to do that, uh, especially this early in the year with that test that I mentioned, uh, I think uh, l let us all have a great feeling about the win. You've been away from Mikhail a couple times now. What are you maybe most encouraged about, uh, about this team right now at this point in the season? Well, I think it's it's fairly uh, evident to anybody who's following us is we have a really uh, great group of guys to work with. You know, they they really care about uh, winning. Uh, they care about uh, doing things the right way. Uh, if you are following us closely every day in practice, uh, we have some practices that are better than others, but the intentions uh, of our players in the team is uh, it's been very consistent. You know, they uh, they're a really great group of guys to be around and coach. And uh, as long as that team's chemistry that I'm, I'm referring to and the leadership and I think the work ethic remains the same, you know, we'll have our bumps in the road, but we'll continue to develop and uh, hopefully become that best team that we can be this year, you know, whatever that is. And that's what's going to give us the, the best chance of getting there. And I, I would say early in the year, our, our team's attitude, the collective attitude is what really stands out for me. When you, when you say you had a, a focus last weekend, what, what, what did you use to mitigate that with the, the long trip and the time change, the early start? I think you had, what, 100 boosters you shared the flight with, too? I mean, was that a distraction at all? And how, how did you... You know, how did you keep the guys focused about I mean, we, we do the same thing no matter where we play the game. Um, you know, we play a conference game uh, in January or February that's on the road or a non-conference game. Uh, everything is identical uh, from, you know, how we practice to what we do in the hotel, time we leave for the game, and we followed, uh, we followed our script. I think um, Ryan was saying you might have gone on Fridays for some of these Sunday games, or but you went Saturday. Or are you going to go Saturday this weekend as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're thought behind that, or because like do you want the extra day there, or it, it, then you miss school or whatever. Yeah, I, I don't remember going two days, uh, maybe to a tournament, but uh, it's pretty much what we do. We go the day before. Well, how is how is uh, how's Ryan coming along with the? With the, uh, the finger. Good. Good. You know, I, I think Ryan took a real step forward in the last game, um, made some big plays, and just seemed to be more sure of himself. Um, again, I, I don't think that uh, the injury that he that he sustained would have been as big of a deal, except that uh, it happened in our Iowa State game, and then he had to follow that game up with back-to-back -back games in consecutive days. So, 
you know, that really stands out. Plus the toll it takes, and, uh, you know, you just don't get over something like that in a, in a week. But we're beyond two weeks now, and uh, he's not missed a practice uh, other than when we got back from Maui. And I think he's uh, moving forward in a good way. Could he be a situation where if he's playing well and the team's playing well kind of at the same time where you would just rather have him come off the bench moving forward? Well, the one difference between Emmanuel and Ryan is, you know, Ryan is uh, one of our team's best overall shooters. And uh, so when he doesn't start and comes in the game, he gives us a different look. Um, and really ditto for Emmanuel. Him starting the game uh, gives us uh, a different look. We have another ball handler on the court. We have uh, almost uh, almost another wing player to defend. So we're, I'm going to say, a little bit quicker, uh, a little bit more fluid in terms of multiple ball handlers. Um, and we don't have maybe the shooting that we that we have with Ryan, but Ryan, you know, he comes in the game and uh, he gives us that more of that shooting scoring punch, and it, it could be a change that works. We'll see. I I don't know if if we've made our mind up uh, what the starting lineup's going to be moving forward, but those guys are all going to play. And uh, you know, again, back to the team centered attitude. You know, we've asked E Man to do different things. He's done it. We've asked Ryan to do some different things, and he's done it. Uh, I don't think it really matters to those guys as much as it does, you know, to some players. Um, is it? I mean, usually you stick with guys, but I don't know. Is that a possibility long term? Maybe you adjust it depending on the, the defensive matchups. You know, like for example, Thursday you've got kind of a, you know, almost a four out uh, pace team that. And maybe maybe Emmanuel makes more sense than that, or or, or do you think I mean, they're both going to play. Um, you know, we want to start the five best players, the five players that give ourselves the best chance to get off to a good start, especially in both halves. Um, it does mean something who starts the game, but you know, Ryan's playing 23 minutes per game, and Emmanuel's playing uh, right under 20. So it's not like you know we've made a wholesale change. It's just. They've kind of flip flopped in terms of uh, when they're in the game. So for Thursdays, is it a uh, manual probably or still up in the air? We haven't practiced yet, um, so I would say it's it's uh, it's up in the air. How I mean, along those lines too, with the manual, I mean, you've been talking about his confidence. Do you feel like it, this is maybe helping him a little bit that just to get out there right away in the start of games? I mean, is that maybe better for his? Yeah, yeah. No, I certainly uh, kind of forces him to just uh, engage in the game right away, uh, not think about it. And different players, you know, they they react to uh, to different things. And if starting the game gives him a boost of confidence, uh, like Ryan, I thought Emmanuel did a really good job against UConn. He helped us win. Uh, he was confident at the beginning of both halves, and you know, really did a good job competing. What have you seen out of this upcoming opponent that probably gives you a challenge? Well, you know, Utah Valley, a very well-coached team. Uh, Mark Pope uh, was a really good player and skilled guy for as big as he is in terms of size. When he played, uh, you know, it, it, you could kind of see the way he coaches the game, uh, kind of follow suit to maybe how he played. Smart, skilled, uh, knows knows really what he's doing in uh, – they got a, a very, very dangerous team. Obviously, they have a number of wins to back that up. and uh, But they can shoot the ball from the three-point line. Uh, they really run a lot of movement on offense where the ball moves. Uh, they have handoffs and cutting. And uh, they can really cut you up on offense with the way they move the ball and the way they, they move themselves. So that's going to be a challenge. And... Um, you know, and I think for us, it's, you know, going from one style to the next, you know, um, UConn really pressures with a lot of quickness. Utah Valley doesn't. So being able to kind of put that game behind us and move to a different style of defense and offense, uh, that's going to be a challenge for sure. But, you know, our schedule has a lot of highlights and it tests us on really each and every game. Um, you know, this is a game that's, uh, that's going to be a tough one for us. We have to be ready to play and uh, 
Utah Valley's uh, a team that's going to win a lot of games in their own right, especially in conference play. And they're capable of beating anybody on their schedule. They've already shown that. Um, just watching them play at BYU, that game could have gone either way. And then BYU broke it open at the end. So uh, a lot like Georgia Southern, we have to have a focused approach and make sure that we uh, take care of business and play our very best. Defensively, what do you see? I mean, do they mix it up with zone to man? You said they're not pressing enough. No, they play man to man. Uh, it's not as pressure packed as some of the teams that we faced this year, but they're predominantly a man to man defensive team. Well, it seems like you guys played them uh, before Pope came in, the year before. Uh, he's sort of had a little bit of a ride, a couple good seasons. I mean, and that's kind of, I mean, relatively. Relatively new program compared to Utah and BYU up there. I mean, I was just curious your thoughts on kind of how they're doing. No, they, uh, he's doing an excellent job. Uh, I know he was an excellent player a long time ago. Followed him, was a big fan of his. And, um, you know, Dave Rose is a very good friend of mine. And, you know, uh, Mark worked with uh, Dave at BYU, did an excellent job there. I remember Dave talking about that he's an excellent coach, really good with uh, player development. You could sense that uh, he likes, uh, you know, from an offensive perspective, he has a, a great, a great basketball mind. Uh, again, his team plays really solid basketball. They move the ball. They have a lot of movement on offense. They have a number of different players that can shoot, and uh, they know what they're doing. We got Utah Valley this week, but for Sunday, is there any plan for Justin Coleman to to visit family while he's while he's staying there? Not him visit family. I'm sure he'll have a lot of family and friends at the game. Uh, ditto for Dylan Smith. You know, both of those guys are from the state of Alabama. And uh, so I'm sure everybody in their, in their family, including, you know, Justin and Dylan, will be excited. Uh, that's a big game for our program, big game for our team. Uh, it's a big game for those guys because that's where they're from. Uh, but we just went through that. Ryan Luther being from Pittsburgh and Brandon Randolph being from New York. You know, they had a lot of family and friends at the UConn game, and, uh, you know, they did an excellent job of handling that. They didn't do anything different than they would have if we were playing a home game in McHale, and uh, it was nice that they had the support that, that they had at UConn. And uh, I'm sure the same thing will be the case uh, for both Justin and Dylan at Alabama. How does that work, too? Because, like, you don't, you don't even get in until the night before or the evening before the game, have dinner. I mean, do these guys see their families that night, maybe like Saturday night to Brandon hang out with them at all? Or uh, Yeah, they have a chance to see their family um, on, the, on the night that we arrive. You know, not, not for a real, really long time, but, you know, I think that's pretty much understood. I think their family and friends know that they're there to play a game. And, uh, you know, the biggest part is to see them play well and attend the game. this week on well, more of the same. You know, Justin Coleman and Chase Jeter have really provided leadership from day one, not just uh, the beginning of the basketball season, but really from the first day of school. In Chase's case, from the spring through the long summer months. I mean, uh, they do the right things. Uh, they handle themselves off the court exceptionally well. You know, if you look at it, both guys are right as college graduates. You know, Chase clo is close. Justin already has his degree and you know they've uh, they've experienced the ups of college basketball and also the downs they played for some really good coaches and it's just uh, it's refreshing to have them as part of what we do because even though they're new faces to our uh, to our fans you know they they bring an experience and a maturity to our team that really helps us I mean you you spoke a lot about Chase what he's bringing and leadership wise and doing it. Is he also maybe hitting a level confidence wise just because you guys have needed him and he's produced and he's, you know, this part of the season so far? Maybe. I mean, sure. Uh, you know, all of, all of our players, you know, need confidence and they're never going to be 100% confident every day. And each of these guys are going to have a bump or bumps in the road. And, you know, it's up to us as a coaching staff to help them through, navigate through those tough times. Um, sometimes it, they're tougher than others, but uh, for the most part, you know, Chase is one of the more intelligent players that we've had uh, off the court. He's an excellent student, very mature guy, and, um, you know, he's waited his turn. He's paid his dues. He's also a decorated player. I mean, he's no bum. 
I mean, he was a McDonald's All-American in high school. He was very, very highly coveted. Uh, just because things didn't necessarily work out at Duke doesn't mean that he can't play. Uh, doesn't mean that Duke was wrong. And in today's world, sometimes some very good players, once they experience change, they blossom. And um, I hope Chase is one of those guys that uh, is that story. So far, so good. In the eight games that we've played, if you think about him averaging 12 and a half points a game, shooting 67% from the floor, seven and a half rebounds in, in 24 minutes of play, he's really off to a good start. It's, you know, it's up to us to keep him there. Between him now and in practice than him a year ago when he's coming off that year a little injury, maybe you know, tough time at Duke and then and then practice and then having to come in here and practice against some pretty good big guys and then but now a totally different deal. I mean the, He's gained confidence for sure. And you know, with, with opportunity comes confidence as well. You see the same thing in Brandon Randolph as he started now eight games in a row and you know he's he's got a number of experiences under his belt. He's he's developing. He's he's gaining confidence uh, in other areas. He's not just somebody who can score or somebody who needs to be hot beyond the the three point arc. As a matter of fact, that, that's something that so far Brandon hasn't done as as well as uh, as we would have expected. And it's a great sign for him, you know, to be averaging 17 points a game and playing the minutes he's playing and, and having the role that he has and uh, him shooting the three-point percentage that, that he has. But his three-point percentage will, will steadily climb. It's just uh, continuing to get him to do those other things well. And he did that at UConn, and that's a big reason we won, you know, that he was locked in and down the stretch was able to make big free throws in spite of maybe an off-shooting night. How important is the ball movement what you guys want to do offensively? I'm sorry? How, how important is good ball movement So what you guys want to do offensively? Very, very important. You know, it's uh, if you just look at any team that you you admire on offense, it, it's usually you know guys sharing the ball and, and the ball moving from side to side, hitting different areas of the court. You know, into the low post, uh, drives off the dribble. You know, ball moving around the perimeter, and uh, ball movement it just breaks down the defense. What do you feel like? How much? I mean, Utah, uh, UConn, of course, much tougher defensively test, but kind of shook you a little bit compared to the way you guys moved it on Thursday. I mean, was that just a factor of, again, what UConn did to you? Or, uh, you know, do you figure, what, what was your thoughts on the way you guys were able to handle well, it? Well, in the first half against UConn, we, we were more of the same. We had five turnovers at the half. And uh, I think against that type of pressure on the road, you know, any coach would take that. Uh, in the second half, we, we did. We, we turned the ball over uh, a number of different times, I think nine times which uh, was a big reason why the game came down to the final moments. But UConn is able to do that. I mean, their pressure can wear you down, and uh, and they certainly did that to us. One more question for Coach. I know uh, Igor said up in Phoenix, he said he was going to reach out to you throughout the season and talk to you about DeAndre, wondering if he's had any contact with you since then. No, it's hard. I mean, you know, those guys, I mean, they play 82 games. Um, I'm sure that, you know, everybody's just locked in on the task at hand. You know, the same for us. But uh, but I've had a couple conversations with him prior to the year beginning, and uh, I haven't made it up to Phoenix to see them and hoping to do so here sometime over the next month.